Good. Yes. In the previous lecture, we were discussing about uh, the higher order, sorry, system of first order differential equations. We discussed what is a system of first order differential equation, how to represent that system in a matrix form. What was the matrix form of uh, uh, that any linear system of uh, first order differential equation? It was a kind of dx by dt is equal to a times x, where x is some vector which contains all the unknown variables of that differential equation, which is x1, x2, so on, xn. It is, uh, remember that it is n cross one vector. And this matrix A was the coefficient matrix and uh, its order was, it has entries A, I, J, uh, and its order is n cross n. So uh, this was a system of first order differential equation it is homogeneous system and its coefficients are constants. Means the matrix A is a constant matrix. We discussed uh, that we, we are going to solve this kind of uh, systems. This was the matrix form of that system. And we also discussed <coughs> uh, superposition principle for finding the general solution of uh, the system of differential equation and uh, in order to check whether the solutions are linearly independent or they form a fundamental set of solutions. We also discussed that Ronskian. Ronskian was what it was, x11, x12, so on, x1n, x21, x22, so on, x2n so on xn1, so on xn2, so on xnn. So this was the Ronskian and we discussed that the Ronskian should not be zero for all values of p belongs to some interval i. Okay, this was the definition of Ronskian uh, in order to check whether the given uh, set of n solutions are linearly independent or not. If the solutions are linearly independent, then we see that uh, those solutions form a fundamental set. Fundamental set was basically, fundamental set of solutions. Uh, it was kind of x1, x2, so on, xn, where, x1 was what? x1 was some k vector times e raised power lambda one t, x2 was what? x2, vector, k2 vector lambda two t and so on xn is equal to kn e raised power lambda n t. Where, what was these uh, vectors k1, k2, so on kn and what was these constants lambda one, lambda two, lambda n? These lambdas are eigenvalues. Eigenvalues. Lambda one, lambda two, so on, lambda n. And the corresponding eigenvectors. Lambda one, corresponding to lambda one, there was a k one vector, k corresponding to lambda two, there was a k two vector, and corresponding to lambda n, we had a kn vector. If these solutions form a fundamental set of solutions, if this set is fundamental set, then we can write the general solution as uh, x is equal to c1 x1 bar plus c2 x2 bar plus so on plus cn x n bar. So I hope uh, you, you got it. If you have any question in the previous lecture, this was a short review of the previous lecture. If you have any question, you can ask me. Otherwise, now we are going to discuss how to find these eigenvalues and eigenvectors. In fact, uh, when we write a system of first order differential equation in a matrix form, we have this matrix A, which is known. 
and we can we can find these eigenvalues and eigenvectors corresponding to this matrix A. Now, today we are going to discuss how to find eigenvalues and eigenvectors uh, of a given matrix A. Let me add people. Now, what are the eigenvalues and eigenvectors? If we uh, discuss it uh, geometrically, eigenvalues and eigenvectors, uh, like we have a matrix A, which is uh, a two by two matrix, and it is one, two, two, four, one, two, two, four. And we have uh, a vector X, which is uh, one, 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 one. If we multiply these two things, A times X, what do we obtain? One, two, two, four into one, one. What do we get here? One into one plus two into one. It is three and uh, two into one and four into one. It is six. What do we obtain here? Three times one, two. Now, if we plot this vector and this vector graphically or on an X, Y plane, for example, this is your X one plane and this is your X two plane. And then this vector X, which is one, one, it is something like one, one. So this is this vector. Okay, this is your X vector. You can say this is X. Now, when after multiplying A uh, with X, what do we get here? One, two, which is uh, X one and Y two here. Now this vector is this one. So this is your one, two vector and this is your one, one vector. Now let us uh, assume any of the vector Y, which is one, two, one, two. Now, when we multiply A with Y, A times Y, what do we get? One, two, two, four times one, two. And what we have obtained here, one, four, five, two, eight, 10. If we common take five from here, what do we get? One, two. Now, you can see here that the assumed vector is what? One, two. And after multiplying y with a from the left hand side, what do we get? Five times one, two. So if we plot this thing, uh, if we say that this is one, this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. So one, two, this is the vector one, two, original vector. This is one, one, two. And uh, the resulting vector after multiplying y with a, we get five times one, two means five, 10. So it is one, two, three, four, five. Here we have five, one, two, three, four. Here we have one, two, three, four, five, and here 10. So what do we obtain here? We obtain uh, a vector, which is basically a similar vector till here. And it is what five, 10, it is five times one, two. Now in these two examples, you, you can observe that In these examples, what do you observe? That when we have this vector and we multiply A with X, 
we get a new vector. Its direction has been changed. The original direction of x has been changed. And also uh, the vector x has been scaled. Now in the second example, direction not, not changed. Direction not changed. Also, the vector is scaled. Direction change means this vector has been rotated after multiplying A. But this vector has not been rotated or its direction has not been changed. It is only scaled. So all the vectors, by definition of the eigenvectors geometrically, uh, all the vectors, when we multiply them with some matrix A and uh, their direction has not been changed, they are only being scaled. Either uh, they uh, have been, you can say, extended, prolonged, or uh, they might be contracted. Okay. Their direction has not been changed except the sign. Okay. The sign can also be changed. Means uh, the, the, the other vector, when we multiply uh, with A, for example, Y is uh, some vector and when we multiply A with the Y, it only changes uh, uh, its uh, scale. Means it can be prolonged, it can be extended or contracted or its direction can be changed only in the opposite direction. So such kind of vectors, such kind of vectors, this one uh, are called eigenvectors, okay? You can say, say that simply uh, all the vectors, they, uh, they do not change their direction. They are not rotated in fact, okay? Under the transformation, of this A. This A is transformation, basically. It, this A is going to transform this vector into a new vector, okay? So then we say that uh, all these vectors whose uh, basically direction has not been changed except the negative sign, and they could be scaled only. These kind of vectors in some space are called eigenvectors. I hope you get it. If you have any question, uh, you can ask. Now, for example, uh, how to find these vectors, according to that geometrical uh, interpretation, we, we can define that if we uh, have X, some X vector in some uh, Rn in some space, and A is the transformation. When we multiply A with X, we get the same X with some lambda, which is the scaling factor, which is the scaling factor uh, of that uh, vector x. It might uh, enlarge that vector. Its magnitude will be, uh, will be bigger, will become larger, or its magnitude will be contracted. Or if the lambda is negative, if the lambda is negative, then its direction will be changed to the opposite direction only the vector will not be rotated, in fact. So these kind of vectors are basically called uh, eigenvectors. This is the basic definition of the eigenvectors, eigenvalues, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So uh, these vectors are then called eigenvectors. And the scaling factor, this scaling factor is basically called an eigenvalue. This. And why do we need such kind of vectors and such kind of values? Because uh, whenever you say that geometrically, X is some vector, 
if we multiply this vector with some transformation, which is A, A is going to transform this vector into some new vector, but it's, uh, but it will be only scaled. Either it will be contracted or it can be uh, basically enlarged or uh, it can go towards the opposite direction, this one. So you can uh, use such kind of uh, concept in simple harmonic motion, to and fro motions. Wherever true and fro motions are involved, these eigenvectors and eigenvalues have applications. For example, uh, in the spring mass system, we discussed earlier in, uh, in while discussing higher order differential equations, when, whenever we have spring mass system, you can, uh, you, you know that there is a motion which is true to and fro motions. In true and fro motions, the amplitude decreases uh, slowly with the passage of time in the presence of frictional forces. For example, uh, air is a fraction, frictional force while the motion of a spring. So in that case, in all the true and fro motions, uh, the, the motion is basically the motion of that spring is slightly decreased only. And we can uh, find that motion and we can use eigenvalues and eigenvectors in order to basically uh, capture the, the, the motion of uh, that spring. So there are a lot of other applications where we can use eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Uh, but <clears throat> which you have already studied is the spring mass systems. So that's why I gave you an example of spring mass system. Uh, I hope you uh, got it. If you have any question, you can ask me. Now let's move forward. How to find these vectors and, eigen, uh, and values, these uh, scaling values or eigenvalues. Now, this is the basic definition of eigenvectors and eigenvalues. We can they take this thing on the other side or this thing on the other side. You can say whatever, um, A minus AX minus lambda times X is equal to zero. Uh, from here, we can take common uh, X. This one is equal to zero. And here we have to put I. Why? Because this is a matrix and we cannot subtract uh, a, a constant, a real number from a matrix. So we have to put here an identity matrix, which is identity matrix of the same order. Identity matrix of order as of A. So now what is this? This is basically uh, a homogeneous linear system. Homogeneous linear system, uh, because this is what? This is nothing but a matrix times X. If we call that B times X is equal to zero, where B is what? It is A minus lambda I. This is what we have discussed in the previous lecture while discussing the system of uh, first order differential equation. Uh, in order to solve that system, we had obtained uh, such kind of equation. And uh, I told you that this, uh, we, we can use this equation in order to find the lambda, which is eigenvalue and X, which is eigenvector. Now, if this is a homogeneous linear system, then a homogeneous linear system can have only non-trivial solutions or non-trivial solutions. Uh, what do we do here? Uh, this, this coefficient matrix should have determinant equal to zero. Otherwise we cannot have, uh, we cannot have non-trivial solutions. I hope you know it from the linear algebra. Lambda times I is equal to zero. Now then we have two equations. One is this and the second is this. From the equation two, we know that A is known. It is a known matrix. If we put here the value of A 
minus lambda is unknown value, eigenvalue, which is to be determined here. I is identity matrix, we know it. Now this determinant, we put it equal to zero. Now this determinant gives us the value of lambda. Okay. And I told you this determinant, if we solve it, it gives us uh, a polynomial, polynomial of degree, degree n. So if it is a polynomial of degree n, then it must have n eigenvalues. For example, lambda one, lambda two, so on, lambda n. And by inserting uh, the values of lambdas one by one here in this equation, lambda one, lambda two, lambda three, lambda four, and so on, lambda n, we'll get n linear systems. And after solving these linear systems, we can obtain uh, an eigenvector, for example, K1 corresponding to lambda one and K2 corresponding to lambda two, so on, Kn corresponding to lambda n. Okay, <laughs> this is how we can find eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Once we know the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, then we can write the generous, we can write the end solutions of uh, the given uh, system of system of first order differential equation. And I told you uh, what are the solutions of this uh, system. Uh, we can write them x1 is the first solution, which is the first eigenvector times exponential of first eigenvalue times t and so on. We can write the n solutions. And then finally, we can write the general solution after investigating whether the, the, these n solutions are linearly independent and they form the fundamental set of solutions. Now, <clears throat> now the question is, uh, what happens if we are unable to find, for example, uh, if the eigenvalues are not distinct, real and distinct. So in order to further discuss the eigenvalues, types of the eigenvalues, we need to discuss uh, different cases when the eigenvalues are real and distinct. And eigenvalues are repeated and so on, some other cases. Let's discuss these things with the help of examples. First example. Uh, <clears throat> uh, this one, for example, find the find the general solution general solution of the first order system. Uh, the first order system is dx by dt is equal to uh, 308 minus one times uh, x1, x2. This is the system. What is uh, the matrix? This is your matrix A. And what first we have to do, uh, we have to find its eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And we can uh, first, we need to find or we have to find eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And eigenvectors of the matrix A, of the coefficient matrix A. How can we find then? First, we write the characteristic equation. Uh, I told you the characteristic equation is what? It is that determinant equation, uh, determinant of determinant of a minus lambda i. We put it equal to zero. Now, what is this equation? Determinant of a 
what is a it is 3 0 8 minus 1 minus lambda times i 1 0 0 1 and its determinant equal to 0 so it is 3 minus lambda 0 8 and uh, minus 1 minus lambda so its determinant we get this equal to zero. There are people who are waiting to. Now, uh, after solving this, what we can write here, uh, three minus lambda and uh, minus one minus lambda minus zero is equal to zero. So what do we get here? Uh, lambda is equal to uh, maybe this one is uh, minus one and this one is three. We obtain two eigenvalues. Now, the case one is when eigenvalues are real and distinct, real and distinct. You can see that the eigenvalues are real numbers and distinct here. In that case, uh, we can obtain always two linearly independent solutions x1, uh, which is k1 times e to the power minus 1t, which is lambda 1 here, and the other solution, uh, which is k2 e to the power minus plus 3t. This is your lambda 2. If the roots are real and distinct, we can always find. Uh, linearly independent solutions corresponding to each uh, eigenvalue. Now we are going to find the corresponding eigenvectors uh, from the equation, from the equation uh, a minus lambda i times x is equal to z, where uh, the first case when lambda is minus one, when, uh, when lambda is, or lambda one is minus one, we suppose that, or we assume that, we assume that uh, x one, or you can say k one, k one is the eigenvector, eigenvector corresponding to, corresponding to first eigenvalue lambda one is equal to minus one. That is, you can say that K one is what? It is, you can say small K one, small K two, this one. Now, if we insert lambda one is equal to minus one here, X should be replaced with the K one. So what do we obtain here? A minus uh, lambda is now minus one times I times k1 vector equal to zero vector. It's zero vector impact. Now, after putting the values here, a is what? It is three, zero, eight, minus one. This is your a. And the minus, minus plus i, one, zero, zero, one. This whole times k1, k2 equal to zero, zero. Now, after solving this, what do we obtain here? Uh, we obtain uh, three plus one is four. Three plus one is four. Eight plus one is eight. Zero here, eight. Minus one plus one is zero again here. And we obtain K1, K2 is equal to zero, zero. Now, this is your homogeneous linear system. And uh, we need to solve it now. How to solve it? We write the argumentum matrix okay, corresponding to augmented matrix corresponding to this linear system. Uh, and it is four zero zero this eight zero zero and uh, we try to reduce this into hln form i hope you know what is hln form or reduced hln form 
everybody knows what is hln or re reduce hln form i hope you know it uh if anybody doesn't he, he can ask me any question hln form reduce hln form you have already studied in your uh, math uh, 1 to 0 i think linear algebra course now uh, we are going to reduce it now into hln form what do we do here we multiply this equation by 2 and subtract from this okay r2 minus 2 r1 and we are going to change r2 so it becomes 4 0 0 and uh, this becomes again 0 uh, 0 0 now this is in the hln form now we can obtain from here uh, from this system we get 4k1 4k1 plus 0 is equal to 0 and the second equation is already 0 so from this equation we get k1 is equal to 0 now what is the value of k2 what is the value of k2 we are unable to find k2 here so k2 is a free variable here if k2 is a free variable uh, we can assume that uh, k2 is some t where t belongs to r so now we have all the values of uh, these components k1 and k2 so we can write the eigenvector uh, k1 as 0 t and ultimately we can take common t as 0 1 and uh, where t belongs to r so our eigenvector is basically this k is this without the t because t is the parameter all the vectors are basically generated by this vector all these k vectors k1 vector they are generated by this vector because here we have a t so uh, the only vector which generates that eigen uh, eigen space linear algebra mein pada hoga. these vectors basically they they generate eigen spaces but we take only the vector which is basically the basis for that eigenspace so this is the main vector which generates that's that k1 space eigenspace uh, there's a question in the chat window g talk to me who is this so the parameter of k2 is equal to t likha hai different hai na, from the independent variable jo shuru mein humne dx over dt likha oh yes you sh we should not write t here because t is independent variable so we can use some other variable here maybe s so this should be different this should not be that same as independent variable so this is s where s belongs to r okay so this is obviously a different parameter now our k1 vector is 0 1 vector in fact which we are going to use for uh, uh, for writing the general solution or to obtain the linear independent solutions if k1 is this then our first solution uh, is what it is k1 times e this power lambda 1 t so k1 is what it is what sorry 0 1 times e this power minus 1 t so this is your first solution now for the other value of lambda which is lambda is equal to 3 we are going again uh, in a similar way in a similar way we are going to find the k2 which is the second eigenvector and uh, i hope you can find it on a similar manner and uh, finally you should obtain uh, another vector maybe as r r times r times 1 2 okay so ultimately we are going to use k2 vector as 1 2 vector and your lambda 2 is what it is 3 so ultimately your second solution is what it is uh, 1 2 e is part 3 t so this will be your second solution 
Now, corresponding to two eigenvalues, we obtain two, uh, two eigenvectors. So what we are going to check now, we have two solutions now, okay? The two solutions, x1 and x2, we are going to check whether now this forms a fundamental set of solutions or not. For that, what we do uh, is a fundamental set. Okay. Fundamental set of solutions. We are going to check this now. How do we check whether this set of uh, solutions are fundamental set? We are going to check whether these two solutions are linearly independent or not. Okay. For that, what we do, we, we need to find the Ronskian and Ronskian is what? It is nothing but uh, what was the first solution? It was zero, one means, what is this? It is zero e to the power minus one t. And the other one is what? It is e to the power three t and two e to the power three t. This is, these are basically the solution. K1 ko hum yahan pe likhenge, zero e to the power minus t. And K2 ko hum, is ke column, e raised to the power 3t and e raised to the power 2 e raised to the power 3t. This one. Now, uh, we need to find this determinant and this determinant, it is zero minus this into this. It is negative e raised to the power minus t and 3t, it, it becomes 2t. Now, exponential function is never t for all values of t belongs to r. So Ronskian is non-zero here for any value of t belongs to R. So uh, our uh, solutions, x1 and x2, they are linearly dependent solutions. If they are linearly independent solutions, they, they form a fundamental set of solutions. Yes, G, Ali Hamza, you have any question? No, okay. If x1 and x2 now, they form a fundamental set of solutions, if they are, then we can write the general solution by writing, where should I write it? Let me raise this thing. Then the general solution, then the general solution, solution can be written as what? X is equal to C1 X1 plus C2 X2. And what is X1? It is nothing but uh, 0, 1 e raised to power minus T plus C2. And the second is 1, 2 e raised to the power 3 T. So this is your general solution of the given uh, system first order differential equation. Now, if we are given in some initial conditions, we can find uh, these constants C1 and C2. Okay, if we are given a uh, initial condition corresponding to each equation in that system, then we can find the values of, of these constants also. And we can obtain finally the solution corresponding to that initial value problem. I hope you get it. If you have any question, G Daniel, come on. Yes, sir. Many of us here push another issue on the S or R go beach may discard here. You don't general solution looking at the C1 or C2 may. S is a constant, C1 is a constant. So they are arbitrary constant. So we can write this one C1, S is, is D1 constant. Okay. And it is multiplied with X1, again, the solution. And the other constant becomes D2 constant. And, and it is basically again uh, multiplied with X2. So it doesn't change anything. You write that constant or not, because that S is also an arbitrary constant which belongs to R, and C1 is another constant which belongs to R, which is also an arbitrary constant. So multiplication of two constants become a, a new constant. Okay, and that constant can be uh, we can find that constant by using initial conditions if if they are given in the uh, system corresponding to each equation. This doesn't change anything. I hope you get it. Yes, sir. Some of the get? Uh, any other question? No, this was the case one. 
the case two is when the eigenvalues or some of the value eigenvalues are repeated. Then what do we do here in that case? In the case one, when the eigenvalues are distinct, real and distinct, then uh, we can write the solution in, the, in this way. Okay, I told you in the previous lecture as well for a general value. Now, if we have n eigenvalues, but first k values are identical. First, k values, k values out of n. So this is basically uh, lambda one, two, three, so on k, and the other, the rest of k, lambda k plus one, uh, and lambda k plus two, so on lambda n, the last value will be n. The first k values are repeated. Then how to write the solution in, in this case? In this case, uh, when the eigen, some of the eigenvalues are repeated, then there are two further cases in, in this case, two further cases. The first case is, now lambda is an eigenvalue which is repeated k times. In that, we also have two cases. Case one is, Lambda is repeated k times, and we can find k eigenvectors corresponding to eigen uh, one eigenvalue. We can find k eigenvectors. corresponding to lambda. Means eigenvalue ek hai, k times repeat ho rahi hai, lekin jab hum uh, uske eigenvectors try karte hai find karne ki, to humare pas k eigenvectors a jate hai. This is the first case. The second case is, uh, lambda k times repeat ho rahi hai, we can uh, find only one eigen vector corresponding to lambda. I get to occupy us eigen values lambda jo hai, wo k time repeat ho rahi hai, aur uske corresponding humare paas k eigenvectors aa jate hain. To phir to solution usi tarah likhenge jas, jase ki hum real and distinct k case ke liye likhte te. Thik hai. Lekin, agar aapke paas case 2 aa jata hai, ke we can only find only one eigenvector corresponding to lambda, then in order to find n linear independent solutions, we should have what n linear independent solutions. So sorry, in order to write the general solution, we should have n linearly independent solution. In that case, uh, we must find k minus one, k minus one more eigenvectors. Because our pas yahan pe k eigenvalues hain, ek eigenvalue k times repeat ho rahi hai, to our pas k eigenvectors hone chahiye in order to write this general solution. Agar to lambda repeat ho rahi hai k times or uske corresponding k eigenvectors aa jate hain. Muslim, agar lambda teen dhafa repeat ho rahi hai, to eigenvalue ke koros, us eigenvalue ke corresponding teen eigenvectors aa jate hain, to we don't have any issue. Thik hai. Lekin, agar lambda teen dhafa repeat ho rahi hai or uske corresponding ek eigenvalue, ek eigenvector aata hai, to baki do eigenvectors, 3 minus 1, wo hume find karna padenge. Thik hai. Um, kaise find karenge? We'll discuss this in the next lecture. Uh, and uh, it's time for the quiz. Uh, quiz uh, has been uploaded on the same LMS page, quizzes, test and quizzes. Uh, if you have any question for now, uh, you can ask me, otherwise you can start the quiz. You can go and download the quiz and 
start solving it. 